Well, a lot of people have been talking about Medicare going bankrupt, uh, which, by the way, it can't. Uh, it's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States Treasury. It can't go bankrupt, but it can certainly make our federal deficit worse. And one of the concerns, and the reason Congress passed the 45% trigger back in uh, 1997 or so, was the concern that the program was relying more and more on the general treasury to pay its bills. And um, what the chart shows it, th that is that um, the trust fund, the Medicare Part A, the payroll tax component of uh, paying for Medicare, is going, the cash in is not going to be enough to pay the bills going out in some time in the, in the, in the future. And, and that's been projected to happen several times over the last 50 years, and then eventually Congress does something and makes it last for 30 years, either the DRG program or uh, constraints on, um, um, on, on co-pays and deductible, whatever they do, they find some way to keep the Part A affordable and, and viable for the next 10 or 15 years. But because of the baby boom coming along, there is concern that Part A, that the payroll tax just will not be able to keep up with the, 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 the large number of people that will be entering Medicare. So it won't be bankrupt, but it'll be short of par payroll taxes to meet its bills. And what this slide shows you is there is a white space there that goes on into the um, period of 2020 and beyond, and that white space is costs that we don't know how we're going to pay for at least in, under the current uh, scheme. We have the general revenue, and that's held at 45% in that slide. We still have the, um, the premiums the beneficiaries are paying and the payroll taxes, but the cost, if we can't get them under control, will exceed that. Um, and if we really push this all the way out, going out to 2080, what this slide shows you is the unfunded portion that will have to come from the Treasury for both Medicare and Social Security. And you can see that in 2010, we're around 10% unfunded that's coming from general revenue. But going out to 2020, it gets up to 25% of all of our tax revenue. Getting out to 2060, it gets to 72% of our general revenue for our federal treasury. And in the implausible year 2080, it gets up 90% of, of, of our general treasury, which means no discretionary spending, because the rest of it would be the national debt. Uh, no education, no highways, no FEMA, no Homeland Security. It would be all Medicare and Social Security. This is not sustainable, clearly. Given the lack of sustainability, and, and what's pushing this, of course, is the rate of growth and cost exceeding the ability to finance it. So what should Medicare do? So I want you to think about that. And there's some options you can think about. One is increase the payroll tax on workers. That's probably you. Uh, increase the premiums for the old folks. That's probably me. <laughs> Reduce provider payments. Pay the doctors less, pay the hospitals less, pay the home health workers less. Or change provider financial incentives, pay them differently. Remember, Medicare's already done that a little bit going through its 50-year history, but are there other things that it could do? Or reduce benefits such as uh, reducing um, the age of eligibility, uh, raising the age of eligibility, or reducing a benefit that's now in the package. So one of the options is to increase the payroll tax on the worker. One thing that this shows you is that when Medicare began in 1966, there were five workers per elderly beneficiary. Uh, by 2006, due to the baby boom, um, and as well as the dropping birth rates in the country, we're down to 3.9 workers per elderly person. And going forward, when the baby boom really starts to hit the Medicare uh, beneficiary population, we're going to be down to 2.4 workers per elderly uh, person. So unless we open up the gates to immigration, um, we are going to have a hard time raising the payroll tax enough to pay for this uh, demographic bulge in the elderly population. Another option is to make old people pay more, uh, increase the beneficiary cost sharing piece. Uh, that, again, that's a problem because already the average cost of Medicare premiums and cost sharing is, absorbs 26 percent, almost you know, a little over a quarter of the average Social Security benefit. And many people, by the way, make less than the average Social Security benefit and therefore that their cost sharing is even higher as a share of their Social Security benefit. And a lot of people rely on the Social Security benefit as their only source of income in old age. So um, it's not a good possibility to do a whole lot more beneficiary cost sharing, at least across the board cost sharing. You might target high income people and that's already underway and is happening uh, today. Uh, another thing to consider is not just Social Security, but all the, and I think I talked about this in an earlier slide too, that um, the total cost, not just premiums 
um, and cost sharing, but the total cost of all uh, out of pocket for Medicare beneficiaries is right now around 16% of income. It's projected to grow up to a quarter of their income if costs don't slow down going forward. So increasing beneficiary cost sharing beyond what already it looks like a non-affordable level is probably not politically viable or financially viable in the long run. So another option is to try to change the way the system operates and in particular try to reduce the rate of growth in, in the, co the cost growth in the system and that will be the topic uh, in the next section.